Hello and welcome. This is going to be a quick walkthrough as to how many thrusters do you need to actually lift your ship. So the first thing you want to consider is how heavy is your ship. Because in this game they use the metric system to determine how much fuel and how much thrust something has. So your weight of your vehicle is going to be in kilograms. So just real quick, some quick numbers are going to be kilonewtons and meganewtons. One kilonewton is a thousand newtons. One meganewton is a million newtons. So what you need to know is, is that in order to lift one kilogram, you need 10 newtons. And that's just enough power to lift it. That's not going to give you any considerable uh, acceleration or the rate at which you speed up. So, um, one kilonewton will lift a hundred kilograms. One meganewton will lift a hundred thousand kilograms. So, if you take, if you come in here in any uh, terminal, and you scroll down to your thrusters. Here we have a hydrogen thruster. This is 1.1 meganewtons, so this will lift 100, 110,000 uh, kilograms. Ion thrusters are significantly uh, reduced from space and in... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Excuse me. Uh, they're heavily reduced inside of gravity. Uh, regardless if there's an atmosphere or not. So I highly recommend against using ion except for in space. Uh, this one, the large atmospheric thruster, has 5.7 meganewtons, so it'll lift 570,000 kilograms. And then the large uh, hydrogen thruster, 7.2 meganewtons, so it'll, it will lift 720,000 kilograms. So that is the basic numbers there that you need to know, and the math. One kilonewton is a thousand newtons, one meganewton is a million newtons, and ten newtons will lift one kilogram. So when you're looking at meganewtons, just multiply this by a uh, hundred thousand. So this right here would be uh, 720,000 kilograms. This right here, 570,000 kilograms. Now, if you're looking at kilonewtons, just multiply it by 1,000. So this right here would be 61,700 newtons. And then you'll just, well, excuse me. Uh, this would be 1.1 meganewtons. So that's actually uh, 110,000 kilonewtons. Or <laughs> 110 thousand kilograms. Um, this right here is kilonewtons. So multiply it by a thousand and or actually a hundred and that will tell you how many kilograms it will lift. So this will lift uh, 9,230 kilograms. And now let's move on to the resource costs. Every thruster that you see here, each costs 15 PCU. So as far as PCU goes, it's cheaper to just use bigger hydrogen thrusters, especially when you're in multiplayer, because in multiplayer they limit your PCU, and it's usually like 20,000 PCU. Now, if you're playing single player, you can always disable that feature, and then it doesn't matter after that point. Build it as big and as extravagant as you want. Your only limit would be your processing power of your actual computer. Next, uh, now that PCU is out of the way, uh, hydrogen thrusters are a little bit unique in regards to PCU needs uh, because hydrogen thrusters have to be ported with hydrogen access to a hydrogen tank. Uh, you cannot draw hydrogen from an engine. An engine by default is always set to stockpile unless it is off. So do not use an engine as a tank for hydrogen generation. 
Next, you need hydrogen generators. Hydrogen generators are 55 PCU each. Uh, conveyor tubes, regardless if it's a conveyor junction or corner piece, are always 10. Uh, you can use any large port with any large port, though, to convey hydrogen. Same thing with small grids. And you can also use small ports as well. Now, for the resource cost, so that essentially covers the PCU. Ion and atmosphere can just uh, use any means to generate electricity, including hydrogen engines or uranium. Uh, let's talk about resource cost. Or actually, I don't need to type that in. We'll just type in thruster. Okay. So the large atmospheric thruster, 10,000 iron about. 2,000 nickel, 40 cobalt. The large hydrogen version is 250 cobalt, only 400 nickel though, and only 3,000 iron. The large ion thruster, which it doesn't matter if you use a different skin or something, they're always the same, uh, is 11.3 thousand iron and 3200 cobalt, 320 gold, and 128 platinum. Now, ion thrusters in real life are very weak, but um, I just don't see an actual purpose in using ion other than they look pretty. At least the the texture packs do. They look pretty, but that's that's honestly it in my opinion. That's like where all the benefits stop. They cost of a ton of resources, and by a ton of resources, a ton of expensive resources, on top of the fact that they require a bunch of regular resources. Uh, they require a tremendous amount of power to get the maximum thrust out of them. And this often, this often means that you need to carry a ton of uranium in order to operate them efficiently without having to spend all of your time and energy collecting ice. Hydrogen may be the cheapest thruster to build in relationship to atmospheric and ion. However, hydrogen requires tanks and hydrogen generators and conveyor tubes, and this can drastically increase the resource cost. So they are pretty balanced because this will operate in space and then you don't have to burn up your ice fuel. But uh, I typically just go with hydrogen and Usually, I just go towards uh, mining ice. That's just my preferred and convenient means of getting power and fuel. And then atmospheric, its main disadvantage, aside from having a high resource cost per thruster, um, is that it only works inside of an atmosphere. So it'll work, like, for example, on Titan, but it will not work in it uh, on the moon because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere it's considered just out in space you're, you're inside a gravity well but there's no atmosphere there's no air to push and that's how atmospheric work and then uh, hydrogen will work everywhere and then but they require you know hydrogen gas if you're on a moon or in space though it's not really that big of a deal because you you can uh, hover and float for like the cost of nothing. And then ion thrusters only are efficient in space and are useless inside of gravity because they're reduced to 20% of their maximum efficiency. So uh, you would have to build more thrusters of ion uh, just to even lift the ship, yet alone leave the gravity well. But, uh, yeah, that pretty much sums up thrusters and how many you need. You basically just want to have to do some math, and uh, that will give you the exact amount that you need. Uh, I always recommend putting more than what you actually need, and then, of course, over time, you'll get used to, like, how many thrusters you really need per millions of uh, kilograms. Most of my ships usually end up being, like, several million so, for example, uh, I got this one here. That one's like 1.2 million, I think. And then I got this guy, 
which has resources stored on it. That's another thing to consider. Um, I copied this from one of my multiplayer servers. This thing weighs 3.5 uh, million kilograms, and you can see that in the bottom right hand corner. And uh, it has, uh, let's see here, eight upward thrusters. So you'd multiply that by 7.2. And then uh, times that by a hundred thousand, and that would give you how much lifting thrust it has. But generally, I go with uh, two hydrogen thrusters for every million kilograms, and that will—that is a surefire way to know for sure that it will lift. Oh, it actually has nine. I forgot about that front one. So this thing obviously is capable of flying because it has like double the amount of thrusters that it needs to initially lift it. But if you notice, it weighs so much, the hydrogen thrusters are constantly having to put out about like 35 to 40 percent of their maximum uh, output in order to just lift this thing. It's because it uses heavy armor, and every heavy armor block is like 3,000 kilograms. But anyways, if this tutorial was useful, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, it'll really, it'll really help out the channel. And thanks for watching. And until next time, have a good one.